A uh, quick overview, I'm very briefly going to touch on some emerging concepts in fish passage uh, design uh, and also the, the primary focus around lessons learned to do with some muscle scrap ropes. In terms of the culvert design stuff, uh, you've learned this morning if you were here, the, the New Zealand Fish Passage Advisory Group um, and others, and particularly led by NIWA, are putting together the um, New Zealand Fish Passage Guidelines. The culvert design section of that in particular will focus on, on two aspects, one a stream simulation approach and one they're calling a hydraulic design approach. Uh, I guess very rapidly the hydraulic uh, the stream simulation approach is looking to mimic the uh, natural characteristics upstream downstream of the culvert in question. Um, fundamentally this revolves around an assumption that if you're providing passage at full Back full flow, you're going to get naturally um, complex and stable channels. I guess the key difference, other guidance out there that we see, is the, is the focus on bank full characteristics, uh, the focus on substrate retention within the culvert, um, and fundamentally, you're going to end up with bigger culverts than your 1960s Ministry of Works manual will tell you. Uh, I guess it's interesting to note in in reality, it ignores the characteristics of the fish. Uh, I guess what is bank full flow? Um, there's a few definitions out there. I've attempted to draw a picture there. Um, dotted line in the middle is probably your 1960s Ministry of Works culvert. Uh, using the, the bank full flow, you're going to get a much larger culvert um, in that particular circumstance. Um, throwing that over a picture, um, to sort of semi-illustrate very rough terms that I can see people squinting, so uh, good luck if you want to talk to me about that afterwards, you can. Um, in terms of the hydraulic design approach, I guess this is sort of getting back into the existing literature in terms of um, relying on defining a whole bunch of characteristics, your fish swimming abilities, your uh, low flow design limits, the water velocity, the depths, looking at bed shear and sort of simultaneously having to, re to iterate um, your design to get the right answer. Um, obviously that is heavily, heavily reliant on understanding your fish species that are in the catchment and, um, and knowing all about the characteristics you're targeting, um, which is, is a fairly complex matter. So I guess that's a very uh, quick intro to what's out there. You want to talk to uh, myself uh, well, primarily Paul Franklin, if you want to know more in advance. Um, in terms of uh, the other part of the presentation around uh, muscle spat rope um, and lessons learned, in uh, around 2010-2012, NZTA assessed uh, and retrofitted 25 culverts on State Highway 35, which is uh, Pokey, East Coast, North Island. Um, I guess we're saying this is sort of the early days of experimentation with ropes. Um, and as long lines of the put in with a view, long term view to we'll come back and see how they went. Okay, so in 2016, NZTA um, engaged TNT uh, to go back and have a look and see what happened. I guess uh, some numbers culverts vary from 400 mil to 800 mil uh, size. Uh, there are about 20 single circular culverts, there were a few twins, there was one box. Uh, and we found one quantity that started as an arch and ended as a circular culvert. Um, all of the installations were fixed using uh, Waratahs at both upstream and downstream end. Uh, and uh, only three out of those 25 uh, were um, embedded in the stream, which I guess is just a current practice. What did we see when we went out there? Um, there's an example of a twin box culvert with a single rope in it. Um, we saw uh, twin circles with a couple of ropes, that looks a bit better than the last one. Um, we saw twins that actually had the downstream end uh, embedded or a tailwater back through the pipe, which is even better. Um, and along the way, we saw a very large arch culvert that had full substrate retention um, without muscle spare ropes or anything. And that's, I guess, that's the, does that look perfect? Um, that may be the stream simulation approach we've been talking about. Um, a few more numbers, uh, I guess. The, in terms of debris, we had 20% of the culverts uh, had 
um, significant debris at the inlet, very few had it at the outlet, if that makes sense. Um, everything's, there's a constriction on the stream, everything's getting blocked at the upstream end. Um, interesting one for me was looking at scout at immediately at the pipe inlet and outlet. Um, very big difference between unprotected, so half of the unprotected culverts had scout at the inlet and, um, and similar number at the outlet. You compare that to when a concrete apron has been used, there was none. Um, there's a slight caveat on that, but I'll come back to it. Looking at some photos here, so here is uh, inlet side of the culvert. That has got a grouted rock um, protection, but there's actually scour on the left hand side of that. Um, so it's, the culvert's already being undermined. Um, there's a whole bunch of debris piled up. Um, that one's got four ropes, um, but two of the ropes, one on each side, up the wall, out of the water. Um, passable. Uh, I'll leave that unanswered. Same culvert, downstream end, it's got a perch of about um, a metre, very heavy scour. Um, again, some grouted rock that's sort of um, fallen down. In terms of the ropes, the ropes are in the middle of the pipe, they've got water flowing down them. They're actually looking reasonable. Um, another example here, concrete intake. Um, the, the post for the fixing is on the far left of that picture. Uh, it is possibly a rail, railway sleeper, not a warrantar. Um, it might have been circumstantial that it was there, but it's there anyway. So a couple of issues there, it's sticking well out of the ground. There's a whole bunch of debris piled up against the water, And also the, uh, the rope has been tied off centre from the manhole. So it's come under tension and is up the wall and uh, is not on the water, therefore, therefore ineffective in terms of passage. Uh, downstream end of the same culvert. Uh, again, no erosion immediately at the culvert outlet because you've got uh, the concrete there, but you've got debris that actually um, snuck under the rope and have lifted the rope sort of two, three hundred mils out of the water. That's been pushed to one side of the culvert um, and the, the ropes are up the wall, again, um, ineffective. Um, and here's your example and my caveat of downstream erosion. Um, that is immediately on the downstream of the apron. So yes, you've got an apron and that stops erosion immediately at the culvert, but three metres downstream, we had a two metre step um, where all of the material had been washed out. Um, just another example there, that's a, a case where they've used conveyor belt rubber, is, is under that mass of, uh, I guess, rope tangle uh, and debris. Um, I guess another caveat here, I'm, I am showing the worst photo, because it's a bit more interesting. <coughs> Um, I guess what happened to the 25 installations? 72% um, are still there. 13% uh, have, have been compromised in some way, i.e. there's only one of three ropes there, or um, you know, it's only partially in the water, um, etc. Um, another photo example there, you've got no debris, it's looking pretty uh, clean and tidy. Um, there's no substrate in the channel other than the rope. Is it passable on that stretch? No question mark. Um, this is sort of an interesting one to me because that's got four ropes in it, quite a small culvert. They're all dead centre, lined up very nice, but it's covered in iron flock. Again, is that passable? Not sure. Um, and I guess what, and the last 16% the, the last of the rope sets, totally missing. Um, we found some loose downstream, um, we found one culvert half full of substrate, um, and there's a couple of others we don't know what happened to um, Some other numbers, I guess 50% of the installations had some form of de debris, um, but there was actually a fraction overall, 12% overall had enough debris to be significant. So, you know, lesser number, but still an issue. Um, some more photos there. Um, what happened to our muscle spout rope? So we took a wander downstream, we found uh, the waratah and the rope still attached, but just about 20 metres downstream, so it's just been blown out. Uh, this is an upstream one, the post has just been uh, bent over, two of the arms have snapped, it's about to fail, 
Um, again, interesting in this one that the wire tie is still on it and holding the, um, connecting the rope to the wire tie. Uh, that's our example of a, a culvert that looks really good in terms of fish passage. Um, your acid engineer might be a bit concerned about capacity. Um, over half full of um, gravel. Um, and we weren't too sure what had happened to the mussel spout rope except when we went downstream and found the waratah uh, rusted and mangled. Um, uh, I guess another interesting caveat here is these are actually, you, you can see in the pictures, the gravel bed load and that will be a whole lot harder for these um, installations to handle than if it was a soft bed screw. Um, I guess what happened to the ropes themselves, and there were 65 ropes across that, those 25 installations, in general the ropes were pretty good. There was a few comments that, yeah, look, looking a little bit warm, but overall, sort of five, six, seven years old, the ropes themselves are looking good. 14% um, of those 65 ropes um, were suspended in the air, 12% um, of them were up the wall of the pipe, i.e. in total 26% of the ropes were actually infected. Uh, then we asked ourselves, is fish pack passage likely? And this is just a pure visual assessment based on judgment. 15 of the 25, 60% of the culverts, we would say, yeah, they're probably going to be passable. Whether you talk about passable 100% of the time, 100% of the species is probably no. Um, but if we're talking some species, some of the time, yes. Um, half of those would have had a, a positive benefit just for some general maintenance. Um, the other 40% are probably unlikely without maintenance, but if you undertake the maintenance, they probably shift from the unlikely to the likely zone. In terms of maintenance, it's really around repositioning the ropes, refixing them, um, reinstalling some of the missing ones, and, and removing some of the bigger tangles um, and debris. Uh, in terms of conclusions, um, wing walls clearly demonstrated that they eliminate erosion immediately at the culvert inlet and outlet, but quite clearly you still need to think about erosion um, protection downstream of those culverts. Um, the other one is that the mussel spat rope didn't provide fish passage all of the time, but it couldn't. Some of those structures have blown up the side walls, have uh, been suspended in there, so there's from time to time, um, that's just going to vary um, depending on your flow regime, your debris load, and um, also coming down to your fixing location of your buffer. Um, learn here, I guess, that using the waratahs in the ground, um, in a situation like this with high you know, gravel bed load, they're going to get blown out of the ground. Um, the other thing to note, I guess, that they're pretty much unavoidable because where there's no concrete dead walls, you've got nothing to fix them to, so you have to use um, some pipes. Driving them into the ground would have probably prevented uh, a bunch of those issues around blowing out and, um, and debris. Um, the wire ties that we used in this case look good, really no problems overall with those. Um, and really consistent with uh, the more recent regional council guidelines is, is keeping the ropes tight, fixed on the centre line or close to the centre line of the pipe would have possibly eliminated some of those um, lift and upper wall issues we had. Um, and I guess this it's pretty clear from us that um, inspection and maintenance is a fundamental requirement um, of the exercise. About should you fix ropes at the downstream end? Um, I think fixing them at the downstream end is a must because it's going to stop them wandering around the place. Um, but I guess counter to that, when you have seen that some of those were pretty tight, still had the debris loads underneath, um, and that's going to increase the loads in terms of. Um, debris breaking the pipes, and that's something for another day to look about uh, breaking loads of them. Um, I guess the final wrap up, looking at, um, this was done prior to NZTA's 2013 guidelines. Um, if I was going to look at anything to do on those guidelines to change in terms of advantages, I would uh, add that the muscle spat rope certainly suits small diamond pipes. Um, there's almost nothing else you can do with some small diamond pipes. Um, in terms of the disadvantages, um, they just come into thinking about when and where you're going to use them because they may not provide passage 100% of the time. They're reasonably likely to increase the risk of debris blockages um, and are likely to require maintenance and inspection um, more often.
I guess takeaway message for me is they're not a perfect solution all of the time, but they're the best solution some of the time. And I guess it, it hasn't been a great presentation in terms of selling mass and spat rugs, but to be honest, I would, there are still situations where I would use them um, in both retrofit and new situations. They're just part of the toolbox, take, take the lessons about installation um, and have a good think about it when you're designing it.